Galnet News Digest, 29th of October, 3305. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, militant anti-vegetarians defeated. Beating the blight. Living under the threat of famine. Lave Radio release delay announced. Militant anti-vegetarians defeated. Drug growers and perpetrators of the crop-killing blight the size of Panem has been defeated in open battle in Quator, after independent commanders and members of the Pilots' Federation, who had earlier been used to help spread the synthetic pathogen, flocked to the aid of the Tri-Superpower Task Force, which has been investigating the causes of the outbreak. The task force says it's also managed to capture key members of the Scythe of Panem at Weber Port, and has been busy questioning them. The Onion Head farmers are believed to have been seeking revenge for the federal firebombing of their crops five years ago, an ultimately futile act that drove the Onion Head trade underground and made it more desirable to many impressionable customers. Fueled by an anti-capitalist sentiment that seems slightly at odds with their extremely capitalist roots, the Scythe has been attempting to disrupt the galactic economy by wiping out agriculture. Their slogan, Crops for Crops, sums up their aim rather well. Beating the Blight Following the discovery of an anti-blight treatment last week, commanders who firstly spread the pathogen and then collected it all back in again are now being asked to deliver vast quantities of the alleged antidote. With input from the Vandermeer Corporation and Neomedical Industries, Rockforth Corporation has developed the antidote to the contagion spread by its fertiliser earlier this month. And the Interstellar Association for Agriculture, the very organisation that refused to certify the Rockforth fertiliser until it had undergone rigorous tests, is urging commanders to distribute this new, untested chemical to the already hard-hit agricultural worlds of Diso and Arerv, with a plan to widen the distribution later this week. Initial deliveries of the antidote were impacted after an attempted reward scheme backfired. The I helped stop the famine decal that was to be handed out to delivery drivers inexplicably prevented the delivery from being made. Initial suspicions were that the scythe of Panem had somehow managed to sabotage the work to distribute the antidote, but the problem was eventually traced to the fissile material used in the decal paint melting through the hulls of any ships they were applied to. Just another mix-up at the paint factory, apparently. Several days in, there's still no word on the effectiveness of the antidote to the blight pathogen, but the Interstellar Association for Agriculture is said to remain optimistic. But it's far from clear whether the galaxy remains on a collision course with famine, or if disaster can be averted. Living under the threat of famine While commanders crisscross the galaxy bringing fertiliser to agricultural worlds, taking fertiliser back for destruction, bringing the blight antidote out and quite possibly soon taking it back again when it's unexpectedly discovered that it not only cures the blight but also causes ingrowing toenails, life planet side is getting grim. Due to a lack of fruit and vegetables, many restaurants have been forced to close. Fish, initially made popular by the engineers, is a new staple. Fish without chips is a stylish new fad seen on the tables of all those rich enough to afford such luxuries. Wealthy philanthropists such as Tashmira Silva and Zachary Rackham have donated billions to the relief effort, but many ordinary citizens have been forced to live on handouts of synthetic food. And many long-forgotten types of food are making a comeback. People at their wit's end are delving deep into the furthest recesses of their fridge freezers and finding the unappetising fare of yesteryear. Among the retro foodstuffs being used to stave off famine are black forest gatto, prawn cocktails, cheese and onion quiche and strawberry pavlova. 
It turns out that every freezer manufactured over the past 1,300 years has at least one of these ancient forms of nutrition hidden in it somewhere. Washed down with a vintage bottle of Blue Nun, what more could a citizen hope for? In further good news for the beleaguered citizens of Deso, a lottery is being held for three more rare delicacies that have been discovered in the city museum. The three separate lots will go to three lucky winners. A tin of spaghetti hoops in tomato sauce, a tin of chopped pork and ham, and a jar of sandwich spread. Lave Radio release delay announced. The crew of the Orange Sidewinder has announced that due to demands from its listeners, it intends to spend the next few months concentrating on sorting out bugs rather than delivering new episodes. Commander Aid Levice was found to be covered in purple headlice, and a small but vocal section of the Lave Radio listening community started a petition to have him fumigated. The Lave Radio crew has welcomed and acknowledged this feedback and has agreed to shifting its efforts to removing the lice, which it plans to do using a small pair of tweezers and a killing jar. As a consequence, there will be no new content this year. Instead, the same old episode, the one with Alan Stroud moaning about not being allowed to write a sequel to Lave Revolution, will be broadcast every week with listeners invited to make their own content around the show. Things like counting the number of times Souverine says, um, and going to Lave Station to see if any members of the Lave Radio crew are hanging out there and ganking them. The crew are confident you'll hardly notice the difference. Live broadcasts of Lave Radio will resume in the second quarter of next year with the Fleet Carrier Special Edition, which was first scheduled to be broadcast in December last year. And that's this week's Galnet News. Galnet News, we read the news so you don't have to. <laughs>